Hey, Pretty Girl Club, get your tea and your popcorn because this is going to be a long one. I'm going to talk about my experience with texturism, my theory on why I believe texturism is even bigger than colorism, and I'm going to talk about how texturism was introduced to me by unambiguous black women and just the obsession that so many people have had with my hair. So I'm going to start off by kind of talking about, I guess, my background. So my hair texture, I know it's somewhere in the type threes. I do not have tight curls. Um, a lot of people have commented that my hair is very loose, but I don't have white girl hair. So I'm going to call it maybe a 3B at the curliest. Um, I'm going to put pictures in here to represent the different types of hairstyles I've done. Um, whenever I do a set style, I tend to prefer something like Bantu knots because it has an effect where I get more volume in my hair. So it gives a big fluffy curl or whatever, but I don't always wear my hair like that. Um, so my mom, she has always had very long, very thick, kind of like mermaid hair. So you know the typical hair that you would see in the Latin American community where it's kind of like a very loose wave. Um, so that's kind of my mom's hair texture. My hair is jet black and it's very similar to people like maybe Christina Milian is someone I can think of. Tia and Tamara have a similar hair texture. So it's like a, it's a loose curl, but it's black. Um, Halle Berry's hair texture in this photo is similar, but Halle Berry's hair is naturally brown. My hair is jet black, but it's very, very shiny. So I've noticed that people have been obsessed with that um, and they're still obsessed with it to this day. And so when people try to pretend like texturism is not a big deal or like colorism is a bigger deal than texturism, that's completely disingenuous because I have had more people obsess over my hair texture than anything else, more than my skin tone, more than my race, more than like my body or whatever. Like the amount of people that have stopped me in public places just because of something as simple as a type three hair texture is insane. But let me get started from the very beginning. So when I was in kindergarten, my mom used to do those hairstyles where it's like uh, you put your hair into ponytails and you like twist the ponytail. So I really liked those hairstyles because I went to an African-American private school. And so those were the popular hairstyles. They would wear the, the twisties and stuff and they would wear the braids. So now that I'm older, I remember some of the young girls having uh, perms and relaxers, but I didn't know what those were until I got to be about a teenager. So I do remember that a lot of the black girls in the school, um, their hair was usually shorter than mine. I've noticed that, I noticed from the time I was a child that my hair was always the longest in the class. And I didn't think it was a big deal because, you know, it was just hair. So I would wear the little twisties or whatever and it would be going down my back. I don't think it was tailbone length, um, not in the twisties or whatever, but it was pretty close. I mean, it was like past mid back length. It was very long, very similar to like what this little girl's hair looks like in this picture. Except imagine that hair texture with like a black hairstyle, so the twists or whatever. So I remember people would always call out my hair, like the teachers in particular. It was always adults that would call out my hair. They would be like, Exoticals United, your hair is so pretty. And they would call it out in front of the classroom all the time. They would constantly, like anytime my mom redid my hair, she did it maybe about twice a week. Um, anytime it was like freshly done, then my teachers, once again, they would comment and say, oh, you have such pretty hair. It's so long and thick and like shiny. And you guys heard my story, my colorism story. So I was having both of these things happen si simultaneously. So people were calling out my skin tone. People were like really calling out my hair because it was usually the longest hair in the class um, in its curly or stretched state. And so I remember this got to a point where people were obsessed over my hair so much to the point where when I was in middle school, people would compare my hair to like other girls in the school. And I remember I had like the fourth longest hair in the school. And the only girls who had longer hair than me were older than me. So they had like more time to grow it out. I never considered this to be a big deal, but everybody kept on making it a big deal. It was mainly the adults. Um, I remember being in about first or second grade. I remember walking into the grocery store with my mom. And you know how like if you have a multiracial background, oftentimes you look totally different than your mom or you look totally different than your dad. So I would walk in the store with my mom. People would look at my mom, then they'd look at me, and then they'd look at my mom, look at me. And I remember even like clerks at the grocery store, they would comment on, oh, your hair's so cute. Usually it would be a black woman. 
that would be commenting on my hair. And then um, I remember one time I was so like shy with people staring at me to the point where I remember one time my mom was saying, oh, they're just looking at your hair, honey. They, they like your hairstyle. That's why they're looking at you. They're just checking out your hair. And so I started to get used to it at a very, very young age, people looking at my hair. I also remember that the other little girls in the class, um, some of them had perms and stuff. So some of them had short hair. And I even remember as young as second grade, little unambiguous girls commenting to me and saying, oh yeah, my hair used to be really long like yours um, and now I have a perm. So their hair was still pretty long with the perm, it just wasn't as long as it used to be. But I definitely had that common experience where a lot of unambiguous black girls, they would talk about how their hair used to be as long as mine or how, you know, one day their hair is going to be as long as mine again. So other people would bring this up from the time I was a child. So I was hyper aware of my hair texture. Not in a bad way or anything, but I was just aware that people really, really cared about hair. I also remember that um, the more the adults would comment on my phenotype, the more they would bring up my skin tone or my hair or say, oh, she's so cute. You know how adults say that about little kids? They'll be like, oh, she's so adorable. She's so cute. So I did start to notice around maybe first grade, the more the teachers would comment and call me out and like say I'm cute or say my hair is cute, the more the little boys in the class would start to like have a crush on me. And so then it became this whole thing, but I obviously wasn't allowed to like date or anything. I was in elementary school. So, um, so I did notice that the adults influenced the children's perception of beauty. So I will say that Parents, you know, if you have a child that's going to influence them, whatever child you call cute, that child is more than likely going to grow up thinking that phenotype is cute because that's what happened to me. I never even thought about beauty or anything when I was that young. It was other people who were constantly calling out my hair. And at the time, I didn't recognize a difference between my hair and the unambiguous girl's hair. The only difference was the length of my hair. Um, so I viewed it as my hair is black, their hair is black, so maybe it's just because my hair is long. But now that I'm older, I understand that there are many different hair textures and stuff like that, so I didn't realize that that was playing into it, like the actual texture of my hair. But side note, I was not allowed to wear my hair down and straight or down and curly because Number one, that was considered too grown. Number two, at that time, I was still in that black Baptist background. So it was viewed as like, you're trying to draw attention to yourself, you know, so it was like too much, like I'll get too much attention. The same thing that you guys talk about here in the comment section, my family was like that as well, where it's like, I'm gonna get too much attention. Another thing I noticed is that a lot of adults would volunteer to do my hair or like they really enjoyed doing my hair. Um, so a lot of black women, they would like, want to do my hair just to play in it to like practice their hairstyling skills and stuff. So I remember having all sorts of different hairstyles. And by the way, when I was in elementary school, I wanted to do all of the black hairstyles, but I didn't wear uh, weaves or anything. I, I just wore my natural hair. And so all of the braids and stuff that they were wearing in elementary school, they were using added hair. But whenever I would do the hairstyles, it was just with my natural hair. And I don't know if that's because my mom just didn't want to buy extra hair. It was most likely because my hair was already so long to the point where it's like there, there's no point in doing the weave part. So I remember um, braids were like the style. And so I did my hair in braids. Well, my mom, she did my hair in like little cornrows, kind of like, remember those Alicia Keys cornrows? Yeah. So I had that hairstyle. And I remember as I got a little bit older, maybe about fourth grade, that was when other little girls, they started uh, trying to expose me. They started kind of being mean to me and stuff. They would say, your hair is a weave. Like they would try to, even though my hair was obviously real, they would try to convince other kids in the class that my hair, it couldn't have been that long. Like there's no way I can do those same hairstyles that they do with the weave. There was no way that I could do that with like my natural hair because those children, they had been socialized from birth to rely on weaves or to use some sort of added hair in order to have a cute hairstyle. Um, so now that I'm an adult, I understand that that was more of the standard how, how they would do their hair was like with a weave, whereas with me, that wasn't really the standard. And so I do remember some kids trying to say like, you're wearing a weave, you're trying to hide it, like you're trying to pretend like you're not wearing one, but uh, your braids are fake. So they would say that my braids are fake or whatever. And it was to the point where even the teachers, the black women teachers, they had to point out like, hey, 
when you guys um, when you guys stereotype people as their hair has to be a weave if it's long, like that's bad. So I will give it to those unambiguous women who called that out and said, hey, you know, you can be a woman of color, you can be black slash mixed with black and grow long, healthy hair. And I just remember teachers um, constantly bringing up my hair when it was not a big deal or like when nobody was talking about hair. So I remember one time I was walking on the playground. So we had to walk in a straight line to go to the playground and I was wearing my backpack and my hair got caught in the zipper of the backpack. So like that was one thing that happened. And then the teachers would have to like help me get my hair out of the backpack because it would get like wrapped up in there. And I remember another time I was standing in line and my hair was in the little braids, like the long braids, and someone tied one of my braids to the fence, and then I tried to walk, and my hair was like caught on the fence, and then I remember the teacher, he was an unambiguous dark-skinned black man, and he was like, well, that's what happens when you have long, pretty hair, and people would use terms like pretty hair or good hair or silky hair and stuff like that whenever they were describing my hair texture, and this started when I was in elementary school with black teachers. So I remember as I hit puberty, like maybe around 10 or 11, kind of like fifth grade, that was when the, the braids and all that stuff was like too much of a kitty hairstyle. So I started wanting to kind of do my own hair. So I would just put it in a basic ponytail. Um, it, it had no styling whatsoever. And I remember the unambiguous boys saying, oh, your hair is in the way. Like, okay, so when we were in class, we had to watch stuff on the little TV in the class. Like, you know, those videos that you watch about animals or whatever. So my hair, like the curly part, would be kind of like this big bush. It would be in a low bushy ponytail. So now this ponytail style is like very in style. But anyway, so my hair would be like that, kind of long and like just big. And so one of the boys, he would be like, oh, your hair's in the way, that looks like a tree, or they would say it looks like a bush. And I remember, even though my hair was quote unquote pretty, or the quote unquote good hair, I noticed that whenever I wore it in its natural state, in a way that I was comfortable with, which means it had a little frizz or whatever, like yeah, it was big and bushy, but I didn't care because so many people had told me all the time that my hair was so beautiful or whatever, so I didn't really think it was a big deal, but I noticed that there was this one girl, she actually was one of my bullies. Yes, she was an unambiguous, monoracial, dark-skinned black girl. She was two grades ahead of me. I remember one time I was walking to the playground and she was like, Exoticals United, brush your hair. And then I turned to her and I was like, wash your face, Shantae. And I was saying that because she had acne. But I remember when I said that, people were like, ooh. So like, it was more powerful when I had a comeback, basically, versus when they just tried to say something towards me. So this is part of why I say I do think beauty is social power, because I remember after that, that girl never messed with me again. After I called out her acne, after she was trying to call out my hair, I was like, no. But anyway, I remember um, people would volunteer to do my hair. So like family friends who were hairstylists or trying to become hairstylists or they were in beauty school, they wanted me to be like their student because they felt like my hair was like the perfect, like it was long, it was malleable or kind of like easy is what they called it, like manageable is what they would call it. So I remember one time I got my hair silk pressed. It was one of the first times ever getting my hair silk pressed, like bone straight, kind of with like some little curls at the, at the ends or whatever. And I remember um, I went to my sister's daycare and like one of the ladies, she was a black identified MLS woman. So even though she was of the same uh, phenotype as me, she identified more so with like unambiguous blackness. But I remember she was like, oh, your hair looks so pretty. She was like, that's about as white girl as you can get it. Like in a positive way, saying that my hair looks like how a white girl's hair would look. So she was saying like, that's how silky it was. So I mean, that's obviously texturism right there or like you're complimenting it and then you're making it adjacent to whiteness. I also remember when I was in school, if my hair would get in the way, I would kind of flip it over my shoulder when it was in the braids and people would make fun of me saying, ha ha, Exoticals United flips her hair like a white girl. And they like made that a whole thing because I just simply pushed my braids out of my face. And apparently that was flipping my hair like a white girl. So as I got a bit older, I noticed that people started associating my hair with being closer to whiteness as opposed to closer to blackness. I also remember wearing my hair in two French braids, like just kind of going down the sides. 
And I remember people making fun of me. Looking back, this is not an insult, but they would make fun of me and call me Tiger Lily, or they would make fun of me and call me Pocahontas. That's not an insult. That's actually like a really great compliment. But looking back, because I look different than them slightly with the whole hair thing, that's the closest thing they could associate me with is like one of those kind of native looking cartoons, I guess. But fast forward to when I moved to the suburbs at 10 years old, we moved to the white area and I ended up going to a different school. I went to a junior high that was a white school. Um, I remember one of the white girls actually like taking my hair and then taking some scissors and acting like she was going to cut my hair. So for me, my hair cutting scissor story, she didn't actually end up cutting it. But for me, that story actually happened with a white girl because of the neighborhood that I lived in. I also remember when I did the school plays in junior high, they obviously had like a white um, costume director and like a white hairstylist for the plays. I remember the white women who were doing my hair saying, oh wow, your hair is so easy to do. Like it's so easy to manage and it holds the style. Like it doesn't fall, the curls don't fall when they curl it or like, you know, when they put it in a ponytail or something, it doesn't slip too much. So they were saying how it's like the perfect texture so I remember being uh, singled out even by white people as well. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, when I was at the black school in elementary, I remember um, that was when twists were becoming popular. So I feel like now it's more passion twists, but when I was in elementary school, a lot of girls were doing like the weave twisties, kind of, I guess it's cynical East twist or something, I don't know. But I remember my mom did that with my natural hair. And I remember, I got called to the principal's office that day when I came to school and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm in trouble. Like they're going to call my mom. Like I must've did something wrong. And I got called to the freaking principal's office so they can say, oh my God, you're so cute. Look at your hair. It's so adorable. We just wanted to tell you how cute your hair is. So they literally called me out of class into the principal's office. By the way, it was a black, the, the woman was a black woman principal, unambiguous. And then the assistant principal was also an unambiguous black woman. So these women are like in their 40s or 50s. And they called me to the freaking office and out of the class just so they could compliment my hair and say like, oh, it looks so beautiful. And so I remember around that time, like around junior high, um, like as I got a little bit older, kind of puberty age, I started feeling almost like I was drawing too much attention to myself whenever I would change my hairstyle because I knew okay, I got a new hairstyle. I'm going to get a lot of attention at school today. Like everybody's going to call it out. People are going to like ask how I did it and stuff. And so it got to the point where I was like almost anxious a little bit, like anxious for the first day of school, anxious for the first day back from Christmas break, because I knew that I would have a new hairstyle and everybody would be kind of like fangirling over it. So now I recognize that that's positive attention. But back when I was a child, I didn't really know if it was positive, if it was negative. I just knew that everybody would look at it and like, you know, they would make it a big deal. So anyway, as I was approaching like high school age, that was when relaxers were like a really big deal. I remember I begged my mom for years to get a relaxer because she said that relaxers made your hair straight. And so when she said it made it straight, I was thinking like on the just for me box, I didn't realize that you had to press your hair with a flat iron to make it like that. So anyway, I begged my mom for a relaxer. So I ended up getting a relaxer. You guys already know what eventually happened. So at first it was like great. It was good for about maybe a year or so. I don't know. But the the woman in the black hair salon that was giving me the relaxer, she was overlapping the relaxer on top of the last relaxer. So she was actually over processing it. Um, I didn't know that back then, but now as an adult, I know that that's exactly what she was doing because I was taking care of my hair just fine. I was moisturizing it every day when I was a kid or when I was a teenager. And so... Um, I noticed that the front and the sides of my hair were still very long, kind of like not quite waist length, but maybe mid back length. And then the back broke off into these short little pieces, kind of like one inch long. And at first it was okay, but then it started getting to the point where it's like you can see it and it looked like it was short in the back or something. And I remember my mom, she was like, oh, she was talking to the black hair salon person and she was like, can you do something to the back? Like maybe put some, uh, some tracks in there. That's what they call them. They're like, can you put some tracks in there to kind of help that part of her hair grow out? And so that was my first time getting a partial sew in. Well, it wasn't even a real sew in. So I remember she sewed four tracks to the back of my head. So it was just the very, very back, just a small square where there were tracks. 
and the rest of my hair was real and it was long and kind of the same length. And I remember I immediately, so I went to church that night and my quote unquote best friend, this is the same friend. I don't know if I told this story in the last video, but this is the same friend who on the colorism video, she was the one that was going around and asking people, um, am I lighter than Exoticals United? And like, who's prettier, me or Exoticals United? So she's the same one who would try to say she was lighter than me. She was clearly darker than me. She was the same one who would ask people like, am I prettier than her? Um, so this same friend, I remember right when I walked in, she was like, did you get tracks? Did you get weave? And she immediately went up and like touched the back of my hair, like touched the tracks. And she was like, oh my God, oh, you got tracks. Like she made it a huge deal. And I remember there was this one Asian girl there at this church. Cause remember I went to mega churches. So the, the youth church was like, there would be hundreds of teenagers in there. So it was similar to going to an actual high school or something. So lots of people, um, all different races, but there was this one Asian girl who was also a hater and she reacted the same way because before I was always known as the girl, you know, people would say she has the really pretty hair or the one with like the really long hair. Even the guys, they would be like, oh, she has the pretty ass hair. Or like that was my nickname it was like hair or something like that. People were starting to fetishize me at that point for things like my skin and my hair. So this Asian girl, she went and told the whole entire, like every single person that knew me, she was like, oh, Exoticals United, she's wearing a weave. She got a weave. Oh my God, that's a weave. So they like made this really, really big deal. So I remember feeling self-conscious, like, okay, I guess it's bad to like have a weave. And it's actually really funny because when I first got those four tracks, it wasn't even like a partial weave to where there's just leave out. Like literally my whole entire head was left out except for the very, very bottom, like, you know, the kitchen area. So that was the only area that had the tracks. But anyway, um, even my own dad didn't know at first that I was like wearing weaves because usually when people get weaves, they get pretty much their whole head covered or like the majority of their head or a good amount of their hair is like in the sew in. But anyway, once my dad found out that I had weaves, he made me stop getting weaves because he said it's deceitful. And side note, I also remember the black hairstylist. I had a lot of issues with her growing up. So this is the same one that actually overprocessed my hair in the first place and like totally fucked it up. But my family, because she was a family friend, she kept like doing our hair. So I don't know if it was because she was cheaper or because she was a family friend, but anyway, um, so I wasn't allowed to get the weaves or whatever. And then I remember this unambiguous woman, the hairstylist, I do remember her starting to be mean to me as I hit puberty. So a similar dynamic to my cousins, how I was like the favorite cousin. But then as I hit puberty, the attitudes towards me changed. Also, side note, I also forgot to mention that when I was younger, about 11 years old, and I got my hair in those twists, kind of like passion twists, but it was with my real hair. I remember when I got my hair done like that, my other cousins, they started begging their moms to like do their hair like that, like the same way as me. So even though they all got their hair in the same twists, it didn't look the same as mine, I noticed. So their hair would kind of like, it would mess up within maybe a day or so. Um, it would kind of like get crinkled up. It was more stiff, for lack of better words. It, it just didn't look the same. So I do remember that part of it standing out as well, where even if I had the exact same hairstyle as another girl, my hair would look different in the style and it would kind of like hold the style differently. But anyway, fast forward to me getting my hair done by this black hairstylist. So not only did she like over process it, but then I remember um, when I was wearing the weaves or whatever, and I couldn't get them anymore. So I had to tell her like, yeah, my dad said I can't wear a weave anymore. So like, you can't do the little tracks in the back and stuff. I just have to like, let it be whatever length it's at and just wear it at that length, just natural. And I remember the hairstylist, she was like, yeah, you should wear it natural because you're gonna end up using it as a crutch, like using the weave as a crutch, meaning like I'm gonna be dependent on it. And I remember getting pissed. I was only like a teenager at that point, but I do remember getting really pissed and like getting quiet and like not really being as talkative. And she noticed I had an attitude basically. She was like, why do you have an attitude? And I was just like, I don't, you know, just being a teenager. And then she ended up like talking to me after she did my hair. She was like, look, you're very cute. You don't need to wear a weave. You don't even need to wear makeup because you're actually really cute. But she was saying it in a mean way, almost as if she resented saying that. So I remember actually getting more mad as a teenager because I was like, 
Why is she like admitting that I'm quote unquote cute after kind of being mean? My hair has been getting fucked up. And also this was the same um, hairstylist. I don't remember if I told this story, but so you know how I said I did modeling when I was like 14. And by the way, none of this stuff I'm saying is bragging. I don't think I'm like the prettiest person in the world or anything. But anyway, I remember when I was doing modeling and then I stopped doing it as I got older because we couldn't afford to like pay for the photographer to get me updated pictures because I had gotten um I had puberty and all that so I looked different than like my 14 year old pictures so anyway we couldn't afford to get the pictures and I remember that same hairstylist um so they would play America's Next Top Model in the black hair salon and then she would make comments like oh well that could be you but you're not doing modeling anymore like you're not trying hard enough basically was the vibe that she was trying to say and she was like well you can't say you want something if you're not going to go after it so I understand she was probably trying to be motivating, but the way that I took it at, you know, 13, 14 was I don't know how to be a famous model and like I don't have money to like do any of this stuff. And so I didn't like how that hairstylist, she would compare me all the time to models on TV or, you know, because they look closer to my phenotype versus her phenotype. She was unambiguous, dark skin, 4C hair, um, African Bantu features. And so the women on top model and shows like that, they looked more like how I looked. So I don't know if she was just naturally comparing me or something or trying to say you could be this way. But the way I took it was you could be like them, but you're not quite as good or like you can't make it because of where you're at in life. And so I remember with that particular hairstylist being around her as a teenager, it wasn't very good for my self-esteem. Also, I'm not trying to accuse her of being scissor happy, but I definitely noticed that like, Sometimes when I got my hair done by her, it seemed like my hair didn't grow as fast or like I constantly needed a quote unquote trim. And I, I'm sure I did need a trim sometimes, but I do feel like she was one of those more scissor happy hairstylists. But anyway, so I took the weave out and then I went back to, you know, school and my hair, it, it grew to about, it was maybe like armpit length, I guess. It, it wasn't that long. So I remember I just wore it armpit length for a while and people, white people at my school, they would comment on, oh, you just got your hair cut and it's growing really fast or like it's already growing back to whatever length it was at before. But I didn't think anything of it. And I remember when I was in high school, I used to use a hot comb. Like, you know, the hot comb that you put on the stove. Yeah. So I was dumb enough to use one of those. I used one of those every single day. So my hair eventually became really thin. Um, it would shed a lot. And so thankfully, this was the time when Rihanna was like really popping. So she had that bob where it was like shorter in the back and longer in the front. So I remember I got the Rihanna bob and then people were like, oh, you look like Rihanna. And I was like soaking it up. But I remember this one girl at church she tried to make fun of my hair and she was like, oh, that's why your hair is broken off in the back. That's why it's short in the back. So she was associating my actual haircut bob with hair breakage. And so now that I'm older, I actually feel like she was probably projecting because it's not like I didn't have the ability to grow my hair out. Like that's literally the style I wanted to have it in. But anyway, as my hair grew back out and I reached maybe like senior year of high school, that is when I started dating my first boyfriend. Well, no, he wasn't the first boyfriend. But anyway, I started dating this dusty guy. Um, so he was an MLS guy and he was fetishizing me. He talked about how his type was light skin with long black hair. And then he would compare me to women like the lady from the Pussycat Dolls, um, Nicole Scherzinger, I think that's her name, or like Aaliyah, or somebody that had a similar skin tone with the similar long black hair. So I remember feeling almost pressured, like, oh, okay, well, I guess I have to keep my hair long or like keep growing it out. And then I remember telling him, hey, uh, next time you see me, my hair is going to be natural, like curly, like it's not going to be straightened. And I remember him making comments like, oh, is it going to be nappy? Like, is it going to look ugly? Like, I don't know. Like sometimes when girl's hair isn't straight, like it doesn't look good, that sort of thing. He was like making it a very big deal. And he made it such a big deal to where I remember being nervous about like when he was going to see my hair curly. I was like, oh, is he going to think I'm ugly or something? Because technically it's a little bit shorter because it's curly. And, you know, maybe he thinks it's going to look nappy or something like that. Because you know how people say nappy hair was like the quote unquote bad hair. 
But anyway, so I remember wearing it curly and then he saw my hair and he was like, oh, wow, it actually looks even better like that. Like, I really like it like that. And I remember people at church the next time I went to church with my hair curly, then people were like, oh, how did you get your hair like that? Like, did you braid it or, you know, like with the texture of it, they were like, oh, it looks so cute. So looking back, I just remember my hair being a topic of conversation. So then I went off to college. I went off to an HBCU. And this is when I realized that not only was hair a source of beauty, but hair was also a really big source of stress for a lot of women. And it was a source of straight up beef. So like I had dealt with a lot of jealous girls before, like in high school and like elementary, but it wasn't nearly as extreme as when I went to be surrounded by black women. So for example, by the way, I went into college, my hair was still natural, like no weaves or anything, no perm or anything like that, because it I had cut it out by that time. Um, and my hair, it wasn't that long at that point. It was maybe like uh, armpit length. But you know, for that time period, like the 2010s, that's considered long. So anyway, I just went into college not thinking anything of it. And I remember this one unambiguous girl, she had a sew-in weave, like she had the full sew-in where none of her hair was left out. And I remember we were both looking in the mirror in the bathroom one day, just kind of fixing our hair. And she randomly brought up how, how long her real hair is and how her hair is longer than mine when she doesn't have her weave in. So it kind of reminded me of what I had experienced in, a, in elementary school, where the black girls would randomly bring up how their hair used to be as long as mine or how their hair is naturally as long as mine, but some circumstances happen to where now it's not. But just so I know, their hair is just as long as mine. But anyway, when I was in college, that's really when a lot of the extreme jealousy stuff happened. So things like putting Nair and Relaxer in my shampoo. Yeah, that actually happened to me. It happened multiple times. So to this day, I still, I don't know guaranteed who did it, but I do remember. So I used to use the Shea Moisture shampoo. Um, the Actually, I still use it. The Shea Moisture Curl and Shine shampoo. And I just remember one day the shampoo smelled weird. It had a very weird smell, like very similar to Nair. And I was like, hmm, this smells like not like how Shea Moisture shampoo smells. Thankfully, I did not use the shampoo, but I remember going into the shower, like I was about to wash my hair and stuff, and I remember girls hiding and like laughing. So that is what made me suspect that those were the girls that like put the stuff in my shampoo. So at that time, I had been so brainwashed to where I, I just couldn't even admit to myself, like, no, there's no way this is happening. Like, I have to be delusional. Maybe I'm being conceited by thinking this. Like, maybe something happened. Maybe the shampoo itself became rotten. But that's not how that works. And also, why would they try to, like, why would people be standing there and laughing and stuff? And also, I remember I had, like, you know, some haters and stuff, like some people who automatically didn't like me. And so this thing happened multiple times. By the way, I also had other scenarios happen, such as having my clothes stolen from the laundry room. So I used to wear, you know how I used to be into, actually, I don't know if I told the story, but when I was a teenager, I used to be very into like designer clothes because of my background. So I was just trying to fit in all the rich white kids. They had like the true religion jeans, the juicy couture sweatsuits. So I had a lot of that stuff by the time I went to an HBCU. So literally, I remember one time a girl, she was an unambiguous girl, she was from Brooklyn, she took my whole fucking load of laundry out of the dryer and put it in her dorm room on her bed. Like all my true religion jeans, all my juicy couture sweatsuits, all of my cute little crop tops and stuff. So yeah, stuff like that used to happen to me in college. And looking back, I feel like part of it was me being an easy target because I was so sheltered. I was so wholesome and Christian and like, oh, hi guys, like I want to make friends. So I was so much like that to the point where when I was a freshman, I had a lot of girls hating on me, just kind of like bullying me and stuff. Sorry, that has nothing to do with hair texture, but that's just a side note of like the type of stuff that would happen. But anyway, people would pedestalize and fetishize my hair so much to the point where when my hair would grow, people would be like, oh, it's because you're mixed or what are you mixed with? That's why your hair grows so fast. So that would be something that people would say. Another thing that actually happened was people would ask me to do their hair to the point where that was like, that could be a little side hustle. Um, so a lot of the girls, they wanted their hair to look like mine. So they'd be like, oh, can you feather my hair? They used to call my hair feathery. You know how sometimes in the Indian community they do the, the feather curls or kind of like Farrah Fawcett or something like that. So whenever I did my hair, it would kind of look like that. 
But I just remember that other girls, they would be very stressed out about their hair. Like I remember my roommate, um, she had type 4A hair, I guess, or 4B. And I remember my roommate and like other girls on the floor, they would try to do all these Bantu knots and twist outs. Like that was the first time I had ever heard of doing stuff like that because I didn't know anything about trying to manipulate my curl pattern because I don't know, I just, I only knew about braids basically. Like you can braid out your hair. But I remember they would really be stressed out about it. Like, oh my God, I have to get my hair done. Or, oh my gosh, I have to do my relaxer. I remember one girl, she spent so much time uh, relaxing her hair. She literally had the short, relaxed haircut. Like, you know, the short, like pixie cut. So she didn't even have that much hair, but she somehow managed to make the power go out on our floor because she was using the hooded dryer. She was trying to do the whole deep conditioning thing. She was like redoing her perm. So she had used the hooded dryer, the, the blow dryer after that, and then she used the flat iron. And so if you have all of those things plugged in at once, everybody knew you're not supposed to have that many things plugged in. And you definitely can't just switch back and forth because we lived in a very old dorm. So we knew like it's going to, um, it's going to make a short in the power. So this girl, she literally like made a short in the power and then Everybody was like, oh my gosh, what's happening? And then people were like, oh, it's because Tiffany's doing her perm again. Like that's what's happening. Like this would literally happen every single time. And then one time she just got so pissed and she was like, well, can you guys wait an hour? Like I just need to finish doing my hair. And I remember thinking she doesn't have any hair. She only has one inch of hair. Like why does she have to sit under an entire hooded dryer? But of course I didn't say anything like that. But I just remember other girls being so stressed about their hair. I remember girls doing all kinds of crazy things in order to manipulate their curl pattern. So one girl, she had 4C hair. She would try to do the flexi rods. So I had never heard of flexi rods until this point, but she would try to do flexi rods. Side note, I just learned how to do flexi rods about a month ago, but anyway. So she tried to do flexi rods to get her hair wavy. And I remember it like didn't really work out. Um, I remember other girls, they were trying to do Bantu knots. And now I understand they were trying to make their curls look like mine. They were trying to make their hair go from a 4C shrunken afro to like a stretched out kind of looser curly hair texture. So I didn't get it back then, but now I understand what they were trying to do. But I also remember one time um, I was doing my own hair. So I had blown my hair out into an afro. You know how you like blow dry your hair with a comb before you straighten it. So I blew my hair into the comb um, with the afro or I mean, I got it into an afro and I was thinking, oh, my hair, it looks like a bushy tree right now. I wonder if any of the girls are going to try to like make fun of it and call it a tree. And I remember one of the girls, she was also from Brooklyn. She was like um, Caribbean or something, but she was unambiguous. And I remember she was like, oh, wow, look at your hair. And I was like, yeah, I know it's a huge afro. And she was like, it looks so soft. And I was like, wait, what? She was like, can I touch it? So she wanted to touch my hair. I was thinking that my hair looked very coarse. But to her, it was kind of like this soft afro thing. And I noticed that whenever I would blow my hair into this soft afro lion's mane thing, then people would, um, they would like how it looked. And it got to the point where people would even call it a lion's mane. They'd be like, oh, look at your lion's mane. Like, it's so pretty. But then there were other black girls who were texturous who would say, oh, you need to do your hair as in your hair can get silkier than that. So you need to make it as silky as possible 24 seven. I noticed that women had an obsession with silky hair. Um, so not just the loose curls, but they had an obsession with like their hair laying flat. I remember that guys, I'm going to sound really stupid, but I, I seriously have never used a bobby pin until I went to an HBCU. I didn't know the power of bobby pins. Now I'm obsessed with bobby pins, but I had never even used a bobby pin on my hair until I went to a black college because girls were like, you know, they were holding down the frizz and stuff. So you know how Gabby Douglas, how she got slammed because she put her hair in a ponytail with all those bobby pins to try to make it flat. So a lot of girls were doing that kind of stuff at my HBCU and they didn't wear their hair with the bobby pins showing, but they were trying so hard to use all these different bobby pins and to hide the bobby pins so they can make their hair appear as effortless as possible. So what they were trying to do was get their hair to be curly, get it to be silky and kind of like slicked down. So basically I went to college at the very beginning and kind of the height of the natural hair movement. So this is when I discovered brands like Mix Chicks and Miss Jessie's and all of the products, they would work like magic on my hair. Like it would work perfectly on my hair. But I noticed some of the other girls, they would get frustrated because these products that were supposed to be for like quote unquote kinky hair, they wouldn't work the same. 
I also remember one time in college, there was a Miss Jessie's event where they were giving out free products on the stage. And they were like, oh, the first person to run up to the stage, like you're going to get some free products. And I remember uh, running up to the stage and I got the free products, like I won. And then this unambiguous girl was like, she's not even natural. And then she was like going on about how the natural hair movement is only for if you have like an afro. And because I had loose curls that I don't count as like being a real natural. So like I shouldn't be able to get free hair products because I don't need them. I also remember a lot of my friends were obsessed with silk presses. So we went to the Dominican salon, uh, me and two of my friends, one of them was Nigerian with 4C hair. The other one was African-American. She had maybe a 4B hair texture. So I remember us going to the Dominican salon and I only cost, my hairstyle cost $35. Theirs cost uh, about $45 to $50. So they both got charged more because their hair textures, you know, they were trying to judge it. Like it was harder to do. So I remember them both complaining about that. I remember the Nigerian girl in particular, she was constantly asking to borrow all of my hair stuff. So she would be asking to borrow my blow dryer with a comb. Basically any hairstyle I did, she would try to do that same hairstyle, but she didn't realize that I was just wearing my hair curly, just not really doing an actual style. And I remember one time going into her dorm room and she had so many products, so many like perm rods, flexi rods, straw curler thingies, curl formers, anything you can think of to manipulate and stretch her hair texture. I also remember she went natural, like just wearing her hair in an afro. And then I remember she spent over an hour in the bathroom. Me and my other friend, we were waiting for her to get out of the bathroom so we could go out. And she spent over an hour in, in the bathroom and we were both thinking her hair is still an afro. Like what, why did she take so long? So now I understand, you know, it's, it was her hair texture maybe it was taking longer to style or whatever but her hair looked exactly the same when she came out of the bathroom as when she went into the bathroom so me and my friend were thinking we could have left an hour ago but i'm assuming she was most likely trying to stretch out the afro or something i don't know but i remember girls just being very stressed out about their hair another thing that happened i'm pretty sure i told this story before was about um the whole modeling thing and how they divided us up based on hair textures and they were deciding like what hair textures they would do for the fashion show. So the girls that had the quote unquote unmanageable hair, AKA like 4C hair, they had to wear no offense, but like the ugly hairstyles, or at least that's what all the models were calling them at the time was like the ugly hairstyles where they just tried to slick it back as much as possible. So not the fun hairstyles that we were able to wear, which was like half up, half down, or kind of like what you would see in a Victoria's Secret fashion show, that sort of hairstyle. So I remember that was definitely a form of texturism because they were trying to say that basically we don't want to do your hair if it's 4C, we don't have time to do it. And like, and by the way, this was a black fashion show run by unambiguous black women and men, gay men. So I remember that was a thing. Also, when I was in college, I got a little boyfriend or whatever. He was another dusty boyfriend. And he would comment on how he likes my hair, how he doesn't like uh, when girls wear weaves and stuff. And he likes that I have the quote unquote good hair. And he also commented on only dating light skinned girls and stuff like that. And he talked about how his favorite hairstyle for me to do was when I wore it in a curly ponytail, kind of like a pineapple thing, like a high ponytail where I kind of tried to make my curls have more volume. So I remember I was wearing my hair in a freaking ponytail so much that it literally started breaking off. But I felt like I had to keep it in that hairstyle because that is what my dusty boyfriend at the time liked. And so I remember my edges were suffering. Um, my hair was just suffering in general. I also remember a lot of people thinking I was Ethiopian or thinking I was Habesha Ethiopian. They kept on saying that. So like I'd get into a taxi and there would be an Ethiopian guy and he would ask me about being Ethiopian. Cause at that time, um, and also because of where I went to an HBCU, the, the black women, the unambiguous black women were beefing with kind of like the Ethiopian looking women or like that phenotype, they were beefing with it. Like I remember one girl, she got cheated on. She was unambiguous. Her boyfriend was black too. He cheated on her and left her for this Ethiopian girl. And I remember when it happened, people were asking her like, what happened? Who did he end up with? Is she black? And then people were like, no, she's not really black. She's like Ethio. They used to call it Ethio as like a shortened name. So I remember people would be asking me if I was Ethiopian or they would be saying that I looked Ethiopian, especially when I wore my hair natural. And looking back, I think it's because 
they associated a looser curl pattern with Ethiopians. Another thing I noticed is that whenever I would do um, like little modeling things or get my hair done at a black salon, if they felt any breakage in my hair, they would immediately want to cut it off. So I remember one time my hair was pretty short. It was kind of like armpit length. And I remember the lady, the black lady saying, oh, there's breakage all through your hair. Like you should just cut it off. You should cut it into a short hairstyle. And I remember thinking, nope, I'm not going back to a bob anymore. Like I want my hair to be long. And then I remember refusing to cut it. And I'm glad I did because I grew my natural hair out 13 inches and I didn't have to cut shit. So all that quote unquote breakage, well, it still grew out and my hair was like natural or whatever and long and even there was nothing where you could see through it. So that was when I also learned how to do my own trims and stuff like that because I just noticed so many people had different um, ideas on what I should do with my hair and they were definitely doing the whole living vicariously through you thing. Another thing that used to happen at black salons when I was in college was I remember one time we were doing this hair show. So fun fact, I actually got invited to do this Bronner Brothers uh, hair show. But I remember we were like in the back doing the, um, we were in a salon doing our hair and stuff. And I remember the black girl that was doing my hair, she accused my hair of being damaged and staticky because in my opinion, a lot of people who have very tight hair textures, or maybe you've never come across a person with a looser hair texture, they just automatically think it's broken. They automatically think something's wrong with it. They automatically think it's heat damaged. And this girl, she was like saying that it was heat damaged. It was staticky. And I was thinking, no, you just have never dealt with loose textured hair. You're only used to dealing with 4C hair where it's like very shrunken and stuff. So you just don't know. But I remember she even made fun of me for my hair being staticky. And by the way, side note, even as an adult after college, I remember some black girls calling me Becky with the good hair. By the way, I do not look white. I am not white passing. I consider myself to actually be black passing or like a quote unquote light skin black phenotype. Um, but anyway, I just always remember people making my hair a big deal. So even as I became an adult after college, I remember like a white woman in the grocery store complimenting my hair texture and she was like, oh, your hair texture is so pretty. You probably get that all the time. So this wasn't something where it's like only unambiguous black people noticed it. But I also remember even being in church as an adult and overhearing girls behind me in the church aisles asking like, how did she get her hair like that? Is that a twist out? Like, how did she do that? Is that a braid out? I remember them asking and they were right behind me. And instead of simply complimenting me and asking me to my face, hey, how did you do your hair? So that they could learn how to do theirs. They decided to just speculate amongst themselves and just have a whole conversation thinking I couldn't hear them talking about my hair. I also remember this happened another time in a grocery store. I was in a parking lot and my hair was curly. So I did a Bantu knot out. Um, but I didn't like comb out the Bantu knots yet and it was wet. So I like to wear my hair kind of wet for the most part. I don't tend to let it dry if I'm doing like braids and stuff like that because I don't really see a need. Um, I don't know. That's just how I do my hair because I don't really want my whole hair texture to like go away. I just want to kind of stretch the curls that are already there. So sometimes I'll do a few loose Bantu knots and then take them out after about two to three minutes just to kind of stretch out what's there and to kind of like give my hair at least a little bit of uniformity. So I remember walking in the parking lot of a grocery store and this girl yelled out the window. She was like, I like your twist out. So it was definitely something where I feel like a lot of people noticed it. I feel like hair texture is something that a lot of people kind of fangirl over. I also remember at the church, girls accusing me of dyeing my hair black because you know how if you have black hair you can actually dye it black to kind of increase the shine or just make it look darker and so they accused me of dyeing my hair black to make it shinier because I do have a kind of an unrealistic shine I don't know how to explain it but you know the typical quote-unquote Spanish type of hair I don't know how else to explain it but that hair where it's kind of like basically the wet and wavy that that sort of hairstyle so I remember girls accusing me of dyeing my hair in order to make it shinier and like doing certain things to make it appear like super shiny in comparison to other people. I also remember wearing it just wet, like a wash and go. I remember wearing it in a wash and go to a church thing one time. And I remember girls being like, oh my gosh, your hair looks so healthy. Can I touch it? And I remember being kind of like, don't you guys have, I mean, you guys have long hair too. You guys have curly, you know, curly hair. But another thing that I thought was hilarious was, 
So we were at this church event or whatever. It was like, you know how they have conferences where you stay the night in a hotel or they have like summer camps with church. So we were at this sleepaway church event thing. And I remember we were about to go to a church service. So I decided to wash my hair really quick in the sink, like do, do a wash and go. So I remember I was doing my wash and go and one of the girls, she was unambiguous. She literally came around the corner and like stopped and like stood behind me. And she was like, oh, can I watch you wash your hair? Like, can I see what your natural hair texture looks like? Because I think that maybe she thought that some of my hairstyles were like a manipulated texture, which technically they were because I mean Bantu knots, you're technically manipulating the curl pattern. But she was like, oh, can I see what it looks like? And I was just like, okay. So I just continued wetting my hair and like washing it basically. And she was like, oh, it's so pretty. It's so long. Oh my gosh. So I just remember a lot of girls almost subconsciously trying to mimic my hair or trying to mimic the texture or watching how I styled my hair and at least trying to mimic the style. So for example, I love a good bay yang. So I love to do like my curly bangs or I'll do like some sort of flexi rod and do a bang like with the flexi rod to give it like a more 90s look. I, I just love different bangs and different updos. So I remember one time I was working at this restaurant as a hostess and I came in with my high bun and then I had my little curly bangs in the front. It looked very similar to Alyssa Forever. I'll try to um, find a picture if I can. But I remember this one girl, she was like, oh my gosh, I love your hair. This is so cute. I love this. And she touched my bangs. She was like, I love how you do this. And I remember just thinking like, okay, whatever. Next thing I know, half the girls at the freaking restaurant are doing the same exact hairstyle. So that's another way that I know that when it comes to hair texture and like how your hairstyle looks and how effortless it looks, that's like a very big deal. I also told you guys before the story about the unambiguous boss at my job, the same one that fired me illegally. Yeah, that's a long story. But anyway, she was also complaining about her hair. She complained that it was a 4Z. She's the same one that touched my hair. I also have plenty of other stories about people touching the back of my hair at church, like trying to see if it's real or trying to see like what hair texture it is when it was pressed, like trying to see if I had nappy roots and stuff like that. So this whole narrative that like colorism is bigger than things like texturism and featureism, yeah, I, I actually don't believe it is. I just think that colorism is more of a hot topic online because when I look back at my own life, the most comments that I have ever received or the most obsession I've ever seen other women have has been over their hair. And that's still true to this day. And that's because for women in general, your hair is like a big part of your beauty. And I've noticed that a lot of women in the black community, they're very obsessed with your hair being sleek, like very sleek, um, as sleek as possible. And for me, because my hair is already sleek, I kind of like having volume and I don't mind a little bit of frizz because that makes it look more effortless to me. But I've noticed that other women, if they have an inferiority complex about their hair or if they're just obsessed with having a certain look, they want it to like look perfectly as sleek as possible. They want it to be as shiny as possible. They basically want it to look like how my hair was looking. And I know that for a fact because people would tell me. They would tell me all the time. Um, but have you guys, have you ever been pedestalized for your hair? Have you ever had people make your hair a really big deal? Have you ever had people nickname you based on your hair? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section and I'll talk to you next time. Stay pretty ladies.